And when you do that, your church suffers. When you have elders that say, we know what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be here to feed and help this body, this organism to thrive. Because when one part of the organism is hurting, then the other part builds it up, encourages it, help us, helps it to heal. But if one part of the organism stops to function, it affects the whole body. Let me give you an example. In uh, one of the greatest books I ever read by Dr. Paul Brand is called Wonderfully, Fearfully, Fearfully and Wonderfully Made. I think it's from what, Psalms, what, 139? And he's a surgeon and, and, and a doctor, and his specialty is cellular biology. And he worked in a place in Louisiana that worked with people, helped people who had uh, uh, leprosy. And he wrote this book, and it's a fabulous book, and he knows cells. And in the book, he's talking about the fact that cells are kind of unique. You know, the, 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 white, is it the white cells that attack bacteria and all that. He says they have to give up their life sometimes. When bacteria comes into the body, they have to give their life up to destroy the, the bad cells or destroy the body. And he said cells have a, the, the ability to make a decision, which I had never thought about before. A cell can get up one morning and say, you know, I don't think I want to do anything to that. I want to lay around and just goof off, you know, or maybe eat bonbons and watch TV or something. You know, and I don't feel like being a cell today, see. And he says if that cell stays that way very long, has that kind of program mindset and makes that decision, it becomes a parasite and a cancer cell. Because you see in the body, the physical body, it's interdependent. It is an organism. And when some cells decide to drop out or some cells decide to take it easy and not do their part, it becomes ineffective. You see? And that's how cancer cells begin to take over. I never thought about that but you think about that in the church. If you have too many cells that decide, I'm not going to do anything, I don't want, what's in it for me, I don't want to do anything, whatever, then you become ineffective. And it's a cancer. We have people in the church today that are parasites. I wouldn't want to have to call them that, but that's exactly what it is. When they decide not to be a member of the organism and know their purpose and their work and their gifts, they become a parasite. And the body is ineffective and unhealthy. That's where a lot of us are today. That's the difference between positional and relational. The relational leader understands the body concept and the organism. He understands that his job is to continue to work with the people who meet their needs. Good leaders, even in the corporate world, good leaders know how to meet the needs of their workers. Not to pamper them, not to meet their wants and desires, but how to meet their needs spiritually, psychologically, emotionally. And when they do that, they're going to have great workers. That's relational leadership. Positional leadership don't care too much about the needs of the, needs of the workers. Don't, don't care too much about their opinion. Don't care too much about their feelings, as long as they do their job. But now, if the institution begins to, to hurt, get out of whack or something, the institution begins to mess up some, then they're going to come down on those that you know, are, are not uh, doing their part. That's positional leadership. I don't know how to describe it any more than that. That's, is that making the point across? Okay, good question. Any others? Yes? What happens when, or have you ever seen a congregation where um, the deacons are more uh, relational and the elders are more positional? Yeah. And what happens with that congregation eventually? Because the congregation would rely a lot on the deacons for the relationships. And that would tend to be normal if the elders have been there for quite a while. So, you know, I, what does that look like eventually? It becomes a threat to the elders. It's just like a preacher who's more relational. And he's out with the people. People love him. If the, if the elders are pure positional kinds of thinkers, that's going to be a threat to them. They eventually fire the preacher. See, that's the trouble with being a positional leader. Those kind of things are a threat to you. If you're a relational leader, those aren't threats to you, you see. If you're a relational leader, you're not thinking, your mindset is not thinking, you know, well, am I losing my authority over here? Am I losing my respect over there? Are people not paying attention to me over here? Because it's all about you. Now, they, they won't tell you that. They won't admit that, but that's what it is. So then there are a lot of issues out there that are personal threats to them because in their positional thinking, it may make them look bad, it may look them weak, make them look weak, it may look like they're ineffective, uh, and all those kinds of things. 
And so they can worry about those. And so if they've got a preacher out here that the people love because he's out with the people, uh, then it's a threat to them. Because he might not pay attention to them. He might take, not take his orders like he's supposed to because they're the employee and he's the employer. <clears throat> By the way, that's nowhere in Scripture. Nowhere in Scripture that preachers are supposed to be employees and elders are supposed to be employers. If you read my book, I'll talk about that. That's ungodly in Scripture. But we have a lot of churches operating that way. And so, uh, if he gets too popular, and if there's a day when they have an elders meeting and he's invited, once in a while he is, talking about positional leaders now, then uh, when he's invited once in a while, they'll let him say a few things. And if he says something that's contrary to what they believe or their plan, or the way they operate, then they are really threatened. The difference, if, it's a, if I'm a relational leader and I have a preacher, bring the preacher in, I'm going to bring in, our preacher meets with us almost every week. Okay, we don't, we don't feel threatened by him. And so he meets with us. He may feel more threatened by us than we feel by him. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, he meets with us once a week, you know, unless he can. So, if he has ideas and stuff, we listen to him. There, is no, there, there are no ideas the preacher has, that, unless he's unbiblical, but we know he's not. Otherwise, we wouldn't have hired him. We know he's, he's right doctrinally and scripturally. So there's no other, other kinds of ideas that he can have. They're going to threaten me as an elder if I'm relational. I'm going to embrace those ideas or look at them and say, well, that sounds good. Let's look at them. Are they biblical? Do we think they're going to work? They're not a threat to me because I'm relational in my thinking. But if I'm positional in my thinking and he's already a threat to me because he's out with the people and they love him, then any ideas he comes up with, no, I don't think so. You see? And so then the elders have a tendency to do that uh, wagon train kind of uh, mentality, you know, bunker kind of mentality or whatever. They circle the wagons. And so now uh, the deacons could be a threat to them because people like the deacons more than they... And I'll tell you how that works, too. If a lady's having a problem, say, and uh, she goes to a deacon for a solution to the problem, he gives her one, he gives her some permission in some areas, maybe. And then, later on, she's doing something the elders didn't approve of. You know, nothing scriptural, nothing immoral. And they find out, okay, sister, where, why are you doing that? We didn't say that was okay. We didn't say you could do that. Well, I talked to Deacon Jones, you know, and he said it was okay. Oh, there he is, Deacon Jones out there. See what he's doing? See, he's exercising authority that nobody gave him. He doesn't have the right to make this decision. And, so, and rather than working through the problem with Deacon Jones... And this lady, they automatically see it as a threat. So what do they do? They come down on Deacon Jones. Maybe de deacon you see, because, you know. You see what I'm saying? These are the kind of scenarios. And the same thing is true with fathers. Fathers can be positional in their thinking to the point where whenever a child comes up with an idea, it's a threat. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow morning because we're going to talk about dysfunctional families in the morning, in the class period. It becomes a threat. And, and because... In his positional thinking as a father, he's got authority and whatever, so he dictates, dictates something. He doesn't want any back talk. He doesn't want anybody to disagree. He wants this done because it's his opinion and his feelings about something. He doesn't want the father, although, excuse me, the wife or the children to say anything differently because he has the authority. That's a positional mindset. Whereas a father who has the relational mindset can say, okay, you know, Junior, why do you feel that way? Well, because blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's talk about it. See, maybe, maybe that's good, a good idea. We can see what we can do there, see? Two different mindsets. And the relation, with the relational thinking, there's very few things that you see as a threat coming from other people because you're always ready to serve. Hello, service. <laughs> My mindset as a relational leader is I'm ready to serve. My mindset as a positional leader is I'm ready for you to serve me. It's a problem in church, isn't it? It may not be, may not be here because you don't have elders. But <clears throat> So this is somewhat revolutionary in regards to where the church is today. And um, it's got to change. We've got to change. We've got to be more like what God wants us to be. Both as fathers in our homes. Homes are in trouble. Even in the church, homes are in trouble. And, uh, you know, it used to be, uh, you could look at the church and look at the world and say, well, very few divorces in the church of Christ. Not so anymore. Not so anymore. We're getting closer and closer to the amount of divorces that we see in society. And... Uh, I could talk about a lot of different reasons for that, but to one degree or another, you've got to look at the, at the father. What kind of leader is he? Uh, what is he doing for his family? How is he leading? And we have fathers that are dropping the ball. 